real quick, real quick. Where is this from? Women be shopping. Women be shopping. Go ahead and drop it in the comments. I know super duper easy question, especially if you are over 35, over 40 years old, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Go ahead, just for fun, drop that, um, drop the comment. Where's that from? Oh, and just for an added bonus, what was said after women be shopping? What was said afterward? That's just a lead in to this long article and it's called, it's time we finally retired the myth of the female shopaholic. And this was literally just dropped. It just dropped. Okay, so this woman says, I can't say I'm surprised with a couple of messages I got after publishing a piece on hyperconsumerism earlier this month. I'm going to have to look that up. I was just sent this this afternoon. She says, I, although I haven't brought gender into it, um, some people thought it necessary to let me know it's particularly women who need to get their spending under control because, you know, we're obsessed with buying useless, shiny new stuff. After all, this is the belief that echoes throughout our society from movies and TV shows to articles and financial publications and women's magazines to names of the economic indicator like the Lipstick Index. It's women who are portrayed as frivolous or overspenders. It's women who are thought to be bad with money, and it's women who, as a result, are often saddled with crippling credit card debt because they couldn't control their feminine urge to buy yet another scarf or lipstick, just like journalist Becky Bloomwood played by I Isla um, Fisher in the 2009 rom-com Confessions of a Shopaholic. And just like Fisher's character, this female shopaholic trope is often starkly contrasted with the savvy financier guy who would never splurge on anything silly. According to a study from Starling Bank that analyzed 300 finance articles, 65% of them define women as excessive spenders, advising them um, to limit shopping splurges, save small sums, or depend on financial support. A whopping 90% of female targeted articles told women to cut back. Meanwhile, 70% of financial content targeting men was focused on wealth creation, and 60% spoke to them as if they were savvy financiers because wealth build building is a man's domain and excessive spending is apparently women's. But are those discrepancies in the way we think about women and men when it comes to money matters even grounded in facts? Even before I came across a recent study that looked into which gender splurges the most, which we'll get into in a second, I always suspected that the stereotypes about women were um, mostly baseless. If the men I know are anything to go by, we got it all upside down, actually. My father always splurged far more than my mother, and usually on things no one would use besides him, or sometimes not even him. Meanwhile, mother's definition of splurging was buying a new pot to replace the old cracked one in which the whole family used. And I think most of us women can probably agree that when we do get some money, we spend it on the whole family. Yeah, it's like we're not all out here being shopaholics like we are portrayed in, um, in TV shows and movies. And sure, my male peers might not spend nearly as much money on clothes or cosmetics as my female ones, but you'd be surprised how many other things millennial men buy today. Sneakers, collectible toys, video games, fitness gear, gadgets, tech, tools, car or bicycle upgrades, um, upgrade parts, watches, hobby equipment, and so on and so on and so on. So no, I wasn't shocked to discover that as per last year's Deloitte research on splurge spending, which surveyed consumers in 23 countries over six months that men splurge just as often as women do. And when they do, they're spending roughly 40% more, both worldwide and in the U.S., on a variety of purchases, including, including clothing, accessories, personal care, and food and beverage. On average, women around the world said they spent an average of $28 on their splurge per month, while men spent $39. This was a difference even more pronounced when you look at just at millennials with the millennial men spending 60% more on splurges than their female counterparts. Another study in the UK found that men are bigger spenders when it comes to travel as well. And they spend as much as 925 pounds, roughly $1,200 
more on holiday trips abroad than women. Even single men spend more money than single women, although that difference could be attributed to the difference in income. Overall, men also borrow more money. According to experience estimates, they have 20% more personal loan debt and 2% more credit card debt than women. For all the complaints about women spoiling themselves too often and being irresponsible with money, this doesn't seem to be the case. However, there's truth to some of the beliefs about women and money. It's about who are the primary shoppers in most households. And consequently, it's the women who do the majority of consumer purchasing. Women are also less likely to invest and have a financial cushion to fall back on. But there are good historical reasons for this. Also, which explain the whole, I mean, why the female shopaholic stereotype exists to begin with. Female consumer power has long been a force to reckon with, as keeping the home was historically the woman's duty. Still, female consumption has also frequently been used to characterize a moral decline in society. This is rooted in the belief that women are emotionally weak creatures who can't be trusted when it comes to temptation. Or else Eve would obviously not eat the apple in the Garden of Eden, right? Am I right? So when the first modern department store, Le Bon Marché, opened in Paris in 1852, it, was, it unsurprisingly made some people concerned with the effect it would have on women's brains and society in general. The French writer Emile Zola even disparagingly declared that its opening turned shopping into a new religion for women and that this resulted in a growing struggle of the god of dress against the husband. Well, he got one thing right. The department store almost immediately became a gendered place. And in the 1880s, women made up around 90% of its customers. And since most establishments at the time only allowed men and women couldn't even order a beer in a pub on their own, Selfridge approach was understandably met with a lot of enthusiasm from women, including the suffragettes. But while the 20th century saw the rise in dozens of new department stores, it also brought a radical shift and how we think about consumption. Following the Second World War, it was no longer portrayed as a satisfying and indulgent material desire. Instead, it was seen as a patriotic, patriotic act and a key element on the road to economic recovery. This coincided with the advertising industry boom, which increasingly targeted women, especially housewives, since they continued to carry the burden of most domestic duties, including shopping for food and other household essentials. Men earn the money, women spend it, the logic went, even though women increasingly and once again populated the workforce and were indeed earning money. Only money management wasn't exactly something that was accessible to most of them yet. It wasn't until 1975 in the UK and 1974 in the US that women could freely open their own bank accounts. And it wasn't until the, the late 18, I mean, the late 1980s that women could even apply for a business loan without a male relative's signature. To claim that women are just bad at money conveniently ignores the fact that financial services industry historically and up to fairly recently has primarily catered to men because sexism is built into the cake, is baked into the cake, I mean. Besides, even if women had money, either because of paid employment or inheritance, it wasn't technically theirs because most assets automatically belonged to the husband once they married since they had no independent legal existence. Hence, coverture laws, which I have talked about. Women were the property of men. There's yet another element within the topic of women and money that rarely ever gets brought up. Namely, what exactly do we spend money on and what impact can this spending have? A 2012 study found that when women have paid employment, they invest around 90% of their income back into their families and communities because women are typically the caretakers. We're the ones that handle the household. We are the ones that are taking care of the kids and everybody else. So our money gets put there. We do not have a whole lot of money to be splurging on things. This article is long. I'm not going to finish it, but you can find it. The, the title is at the very beginning of this um, video. And if you are in my on my YouTube community, the title will be put in the description. You can click on it and finish. It. But so much of this is just rooted in stereotypes and sexism, basically. All right.
jump in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.